Our final speaker is Professor Moshe Heringel. He is an expert on political thought, Judaism and democracy, the state of Israel, Israeli society, and religious Zionism in Israel. He is the past head of the Schwartz Center for Ethics, Judaism, and the State at Bet Morasha. He previously ran a program for sec religious secular dialogue, as well as the program for democracy and citizenship at Barilan University. He is an active public speaker and an advocator on issues related to promoting the Jewish identity of the state and bridge conflicts in Israeli society. Two preliminary remarks. One, I had the honor of meeting Rabbi Zaks on separate occasions, and uh, I invited him here to Bar Ilan in 2003 when I was the head of the program for a religious and secular dialogue in the university. He delivered a lecture, amazing lecture, and spoke with the students. And for many of them, it was one of the most important events in their academic life at bar -Ilan. Later on, we continued writing, and then he invited me to visit him at home. And I came, and I visited him, and he even gave me then is Agadah uh, Shel Pesach, in which I'll read some sentences later on. And even we thought to write a book together, but unfortunately it didn't come out. This is one. The second thing is, in the last 15 years, the translations of Rabbi Zaks' books into Hebrew became a great hit in the religious Zionist community in Israel, especially within the religious Zionist community in Israel. Well, after what we heard now from uh, Dr. Schwartz, and for somebody who reads or knows the writing of Rabbi Zaks and some of his speeches as well, that is not a very understandable thing. Because the gap between Rabbi Zaks and what happened to religious Zionism in Israel in the last 25 years is quite big. Religious Zionism became more nationalistic. Rabbi Zaks is very pluralistic, much more democrat. And his vision of Israel, which is profoundly Zionist and religious Zionist, is closer to the religious Zionism of 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, not the religious Zionism of today. So many times I ask myself, what happened? So the answer is that for me, is so interesting, is so relevant for individuals and for people, religious people, that people tend to disregard what he has to say about politics or the future of Israel or things like that. Okay, that, I start with that because Rabbi Zaks is the most influential religious um, rabbi, maybe not only rabbi, a religious uh, person in the Western world in the last 30 years, undoubtedly. I can't think of anybody else who influenced not only Jews, Orthodox and non-Orthodox, but non-Jews as a spiritual leader, figure, inspiration as Rabbi Zaks. Certainly in England, where he had regular radio, show, radio um, programs and some television shows, but also in other places. We, I speak here as an Orthodox Jew, don't have today, and didn't have in the last 20, 30 years, figures who were so important. And the vacuum that is left after his press way so early at 72 years, I don't see anybody else who can fulfill it. So for me, personally, is a... Uh, his absence is quite tragic. Okay, 
I want to focus now, after, after saying that, I want to focus on, on one key issue in Rabbi Zak's thought that is relevant from the beginning of his writing till the last books, and is one of the most, maybe the most important issue in Jewish political tradition, and one of the most important issue in Western political tradition, especially uh, current Western political tradition, but not only. And the issue is how you can combine if you want to combine between, between universalism and individualism at one hand, and collectivism and particularism from the other. Because individualism is quite different. Sometimes it really contradicts collectivism. When you are co with collective identity, your individuality is only part of the collective, if you go to the extreme. If you go to the extreme of individualism, so the uniqueness of yourself is by being individual. The same about universalism and particularism. Universalism includes everybody in the world, and particularism makes differences between separate nations, religions, communities. So can you combine both individualism and universalism from one end, and collectivism and particularism for the other, by sex, that's answering the affirmative. And it's very important in his worldview. One. The second thing is that they usually, in our life, always, you know, in the most important issue, it's not either or. I am I, I see myself as a religious person. You see a black young I learned in Yeshivot Haredit. I was Haredit till I was 30. I'm a religious Zionist in the last 30 years. I, I was very different as a Haredi. I'm very different as a religious Zionist. And when I see myself, I know, as so many people, that I'm both religious and secular. In our life, usually it's not either or. It's both things. And the question then is how much from both things. Whether you are more liberal or more Zionist, more uh, uh, democrat or more elitist, more universalistic or more particularistic. The issue is what is more, but not either or. We present ourselves as something free from other influences, but it's not the case. And the uniqueness of Rabbi Zaks is, and here is really rare and very important, that he goes in the road toward combining Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, with liberal democracy, but from a particularistic point of view. That is more than universalistic point of view, it's both. But he stresses in all his work more the particularistic side than the universalistic side. And that is very rare because usually when we see thinkers, politicians, rabbis that stress the part of the particularistic Jewish identity, usually they don't go to become liberal democrats. They are more nationalistic. They are more fundamentalistic. So that is an amazing thing. And a huge contrib contribution of Rabbi Zaks, not only for Jewish scholarship, but Western liberal scholarship. And there, he is close to the communitarianism, but not all the communitarians, but to the sort of thinking, or the school of thinking, of liberal communitarian, which by, I'm also part of it. That you give the debate between, we saw in the first uh, presentation, the huge debate between communitarians, there was a very important book, Communitarians versus Liberals, and then it was so certain, as usually people think, that liberalism is individualistic liberalism. 
But historically, it's not the case, because there were two strands of liberalism. There was the liberalism that started from the big three Johns. John Locke in the 17th century, individual liberalism, and then it went to John Stuart Mill in the 19th century, and then it concludes in the thought, not only, but specifically John Rawls in the 20th century. Wow. But against that strand of thinking, there was the Republican liberalism that later on became the communitarian liberalism. And in the past, it started with Spinoza, went to Montesquieu, and later on to Alexis de Tocqueville in the 19th century. And today, communitarian liberals such as Charles Taylor, Michael Walters, some others, in part Michael Sandel, etc. So you don't have to be liberal individualistic. And Rabbi Zaks spoke specifically on communitarian in politics of hope, but it really is around all his work. He brings Judaism in, not only because Judaism is so important to him, so dear to his heart, but because Judaism is the key example, according to Rabbi Zaks, of having a moral foundation of society and state that starts with Abraham when he goes out to Canaan. Particularism. After the days of Adam Arishon and later on Noah and the covenant of Noah and the covenant later on of Abraham and covenant is very important in Rabbi Zak's thinking. He always speaks about covenantal society. He's not the only one. There were other people he was influenced from, like, I, like one of our professors, Professor Daniel Elazar, who spoke a lot about it. And be, before there were other rabbis, Rabbi Hirschenzon and others. But he says that the covenant Judaism starts with the particularistic Judaism of language, of religion, of community. Religion is basically a community issue. But it can't be, it can't be anti-universalistic. Here, he spoke before, but later on, Michael Walter, that Rabbi Zaks knew and speaks about and writes about, Michael one of the key uh, uh, intellectuals and philosophers in the liberal thought today, also in Jewish thought today. Michael Walter spoke about thick and thin, that the way we should go to human rights is not like John Rawls and others, Ronald Dworkin and others, basically on universalistic abstract terms, but this will be only the, the thin, the first layer, basic human rights. But then there is the thick building, which is more particularistic, more communitarian from your own cultures. So Rabbi Zaks always speak that the uniqueness of Abraham tells the story of a nation who sees herself as unique, but if it sees itself as unique, it sees other nations as well as unique. And this is not the regular particularistic understanding that we really know. Because we really know that people turn to be more particularistic, they turn to be more chauvinistic, more against the other, sometimes racist. One, well, okay, I'll try and make it too. Okay, so that's quite important in the thought. I wanted to quote some quotes, I won't bring the quotes, but uh, uh, he starts always with the difference, okay? and the, the dignity of being different. Here, he's closer to some postmodernist thought, especially to Richard Rorty. He's not like him, but in this specific point, because Richard Rorty said, in my point of view, is the most important postmodernistic thinker, more than the French school, but I'm not totally objective here. So he starts his own understanding about human rights, not as in universal human rights as in Kant's, or even John Locke natural rights, etc., but in the specificness of each person. And therefore, you can't be racist against anybody. So it starts with the uniqueness. So here, Rabbi Zaks is closer to him. Another uh, intellectual who Rabbi Zaks was very influenced from was, of course, Ishayar Berlin. Ishayar Berlin, one of the key intellectuals in the liberal world, 
Jewish liberal intellectual. He always was the exception. And he's not postmodern. He inspired some of the postmoderns. But he was a liberal modern point of uh, thinker, modernist thinker. And uh, Berlin said that usually we see the Enlightenment as a way towards liberalism, democracy, because of its universal understanding of human rights and thinking and rationalism, etc. But that was a, some of it was totally totalitaristic because everything is according to one universal understanding. And here, just the other school, the Romanticism, says Berlin, the liberal Berlin, the Romanticism that spoke about the uniqueness of everyone according to the English school of Romanticism, or the uniqueness of every nation according to the German uh, school of Romanticism, spoke about uniqueness. And Berlin says you can't go against the uniqueness of people. You can't try to have only one truth. And Rabbi Zaks was very influenced from this understanding of Berlin. They were close, and even was in his, uh, 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 he even spoke about him after his death. I'm finishing in half a minute. And, uh, uh, and he really tried to build something that combines universalistic and particularistic understanding. The last remark is this. The beginning of this, when you look at his um, books at the beginning, he speaks mainly towards the Jewish people about what happens after Holocaust, Orthodox Judaism against non-Orthodox Judaism, etc. Later on, he brings the same point, but speaks universally towards all the world. And, and he really relates to the most important problems that are facing people today in the, in the book of, about morality, for instance. He speaks about the problem of individualism, go, goes back to Tocqueville, the problem of individualism that make people be alone and more vulnerable. Uh, after us, later on, will come Professor Putnam, who spoke in his bowling alone. I don't know whether he is he's here, but he, he spoke about the probably problem of losing the social capital, goes after Tocqueville as well. And it takes the same understanding and facing the, the problem of divorce, of violence, everything goes to the same thing. The I, the I, the I, and not the we. And here again you see his communitarian understanding in his Jewish interpretation. Thank you very much. I just want, how did Avram Avinu's particularism go to universalism? This is why I came. Because, look at the first, the Parsha Lechlecha. Lechlecha me'artecha mulakecha mibet avira, being particular against all the civilization of Shumer, Ahad, etc. It was particular because he was unique. But he's having going gadol v'avarecha v'nivrechu v'pat kol mishpechot adama. Which means, means that his way in education, in education, that he will inspire monotheism, morality, responsibility, not only for his family, it starts always with the family, says Rabbi Zanz. But it has to go to the people, and it can't stop with the people, yes, it has to go later on to the world. 36 times, says Rabbi Zanz, many times, the Torah speaks about the Ger, which is the non-Jew living in your country, the way you have to treat him with dignity, and even love. So you can start, but from, it goes back like Aristotle and Plato, can you really love somebody if you love everybody? Again, yeah, Rabbi Zaks is against Platonism. He speaks about it, the problem, the devil of Platonism. But uh, so you start with that, but it influences on the whole human being. Abba Mongoy. Abba Mongoy? Yeah, Abba Mongoy. Okay. I know that there are questions. There was someone who wanted to ask a question in the beginning. Hello? Sorry? Oh, yes. Forgive me, I'm going to be one of the people who um, makes a statement instead of asking a question, because like, I want to relate to your question also in terms of what you said. I think in addition, in parallel, Rabbi Sachs does have a, a major paradigm of the move from the universal to the particular. And your question in terms of Abraham Avinu, it 
very much comes as kind of his focus is on the particular, and he demonstrates this through. Um, um, he demonstrates this through beginning with indignity of difference, but also elsewhere. Uh, Sipul Migdal Babel, the Tower of Babel, and Noah. And these for him are his universal paradigms. We don't know where they happen. We don't know who they happen to. Okay, but they're big um, um, kind of paradigms of universalism. He <coughs> says the whole story of the Jewish people, the particularism, starts at that moment when Abraham Avinu is commanded to, to go. And that is a particularist command. And that also makes sense in terms of the the Jewish minority and modernity and how, how that plays out within the collective. So I think in, in, yeah, in, in I just, I know, let me just finish my sentence. So in, in parallel to that, I think there is also a move from the universal to the particular that he does try to sustain and does sustain all the way through. And it will be interesting to track that in terms of the rise of religious fundamentalism. <coughs> Rabbi Zaks, because the first layer is always the universal layer. But when you go to Rabbi Zaks, the way he sees Babel, which is very important in his thought, he sees the collapse of the universalism. He sees the, the feeling of proud of human beings about the Tower of Babel, but then the collapse to different languages. And the start, this is the beginning of the Tikkun, and then will come Abraham, who will bring the, the right way of the so it's not only that there are two layers of universalism and then particularism, we, and when you need universalism when you are particularistic, but that the main thing is the particularistic, spiritual, moral way of ever. That's where I, where I differ from you, and I think that's what Rabbi Zaks meant. Mm -hmm. We can continue the conversation. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question for a professor. Uh, Eric, yeah. Um, so you, you spoke about Robert Sachs being disturbed about the move from the Gemeinschaft to Gesellschaft, but he said, but he just idealized uh, the Gemeinschaft. And then you had a quote about, and then you had a quote about uh, his uh, opposition to any type of political imposition of uniformity or, or limiting any type of freedom. But, the way I understood the problem with, uh, with Gemeinschaft is more not political, but the social. Namely, that there's a social consensus. Because of a face-to-face -face type of community, you, you, know, you, 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 you enforce conformity through consensus, through gossip, through social pressure. Uh, and, and that becomes the, the problem, which can actually sometimes be more powerful than political. A famous story about Chomets, but anyway. Uh, so I just wonder if Rabbi Sachs addresses this problem of, of, uh, uh, with the community and the problem of uh, imposed social conformity. Okay, so thank you. Um, so I think the, the, I think that the, the, uh, the solution perhaps that uh, Rabbi Sachs had in his, uh, suggested uh, to us is uh, uh, many different communities, many different types of congregations and associations living by what, side by side in a given society. And once those um, uh, values are not imposed by the state, but they are um, taken by each individual um, who decides to join a certain uh, community, the solution of an imposition of uh, collective values uh, towards the members of this community is, is the exit. But you just move to a different community. Now that's not a perfect solution, but that, that would be the kind of the liberal, that real solution. I think that's that's what Zach suggested. There are this little, there's a big literature on the right to exit from from communities, but I don't I don't know if Zach wrote about that. But that would be kind of the, the, the standard the response. I think it's a good response. I mean, the whole issue about leaving communities, even if theoretically they're voluntary, you try to leave certain communities, which I won't mention any names. It's very difficult. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll just try to speak up. Um, fascinating. Uh, I enjoyed every speech so much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Just wait to get the microphone. Microphone. Yeah. I just won't say anything important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
So it, it seems to me that uh, the home we built together, though, though I think we're right to put so much uh, emphasis on it because it is such a central work and it's political thinking, it, it was written, I think, very much with Western European states in mind. And, and the only place, I think, where he really tries concertedly to apply his political philosophy to the Israeli context it is in future tense, which, you, which you, you get to at the end. Now, I, I wondered, really from the first two speakers in particular, but all, all three of you would be interested to hear, because the third speaker said something I think is quite funny and true. I think a lot of people in the religious Zionist community read Rabbi Sachs, but there's a good section of them that when he gets to something a bit political, they kind of gloss over that bit and just enjoy the, the drusher of, of, of other parts. Um, I, I want to know, do you think there are any political activists or political scientists or public intellectuals in Israel who are actively trying to uh, realize what was really quite um, a, broad a broad brush stroke vision there in, in, in future tense. That's to say the creation of a covenant that, that uh, all Israelis, irrespective of their religion, could feel that they were, they were part of. The spinning of a narrative that somehow every that was somehow inclusive of, of all the communities is that actually on the kind of political intellectual agenda at all, uh, or, or is it something we can hope will emerge in the future? There are some um, the minority within uh, Orthodox Jews in Israel, modern Orthodox or intellectual modern Orthodox. Some of them were by some of them academians. Intellectuals try to uh, try to work. I see some of them here. That <laughs> we are not too many, but try to build something like that. Uh, the fact is that none of us has the same of um, of importance uh, as Rabbi Zaks had because he wasn't in Israel. Because he wasn't. Then it's like Rabbi, it's not the same, but like Rabbi Salvechik. Rabbi Salvechik wanted to be chief rabbi, chief rabbi of Israel in 1935. He wasn't elected. Rabbi Amiel was elected. Who remembers Rabbi Amiel? Yeah, huh, very few people. <laughs> Who remember Rabbi Amiel? And Rabbi Salvechik, Baruch Hashem, stayed in America and raised thousands of rabbis and inspired so many Jews in a very complex vision. Rabbi Zaks was influenced by Rabbi Solvechik, of course. So that you can do when you are abroad. <laughs> Maybe that's why his great hero, the Rebbe of Chabad, the Chabadzke Rebbe, because of him he became a rabbi and so much uh, influenced other people, he changed all his life. Uh, he was in America. <laughs> it's easier. Okay. If, I, if I can add a word to that, in 2001 here at the university, there was this uh, dialogue between Rabbi Sachs and uh, the author Amos Oz, which, which was uh, moderated by Professor Jonathan Reinhold. And uh, I thought, never heard of it. Never heard of it. For the good relations that they had, at least in, if, if you read the, the, the dialogue, it seems very warm and very friendly conversation. And you think, uh, okay, but in the 1989 book uh, of Rabbi Zak, Traditional Alternatives, he is quite critical of secular, of secular Zionists. He called them secularists, uh, which I think Amos Oz would be one of them. But uh, if we take into account, for example, the, the, one of the recent books of Amos Oz, uh, Jews and Words, you see that, uh, surprisingly, he holds the same view of what Judaism is in the sense that it is not an ethnic group. It is something that's in words, it's something in tradition, in culture. Uh, so for, the, for Rabbi Sachs, of course, it would be uh, the laws of the Torah define who is Jewish and what, what Judaism is about. And uh, Amos Oz would have a much uh, dynamic uh, understanding of the tradition. But still, uh, you can find partners of uh, the views of Rabbi Sachs in different segments of society. 
I must add, I was there, and I spoke to Amos Oz after that conversation. And Amos Oz told me privately that everybody sees me as some sort of a leader of secularism in Israel. If I wouldn't see the religious orthodox in Israel, I would define myself as religious. Okay? And Rabbi Zaks told him then that if you want really to be a secular, you must live in Israel. Because outside Israel, you won't survive. We have to conclude because we have another part of the wonderful program that is coming up. Um, Robert Putnam is going to speak uh, via Zoom. So, anyone would like to uh, pray the minutes of